A ventilator's flow rate or inspiratory flow rate is the rate at which gas is delivered to the lungs during inhalation. It gives us a measure of how quickly or slowly gas like oxygen is delivered to a patient's lungs. For a normal spontaneously breathing patient at rest, the typical inspiratory flow rate is around 20 to 30 liters per minute. Most adult patients receiving mechanical ventilation, the inspiratory flow rate is typically set around 60 liters per minute, but can be adjusted higher or lower based on the patient's individual needs and clinical presentation. Flow rate and tidal volume are closely related because flow rate determines how quickly tidal volume is delivered during inspiration, while both flow rate and inspiratory time together determine the total amount of air that enters the lungs per breath. If flow rate increases, tidal volume can be delivered faster with shorter inspiratory time. If flow rate decreases, tidal volume is delivered slower, leading to a longer inspiratory time. Suppose a ventilator has a flow rate of 60 liters per minute and an inspiratory time of 1 second. Since 60 liters per minute equals 1 liter per second, the tidal volume delivered would be 1 liter. If the inspiratory time is increased to 1.5 seconds, the tidal volume would be 1.5 liters. In a real clinical scenario, this calculation is only practical in volume-controlled ventilation, where the ventilator delivers a set tidal volume and adjusts the flow rate to meet the inspiratory time, whereas in pressure-controlled ventilation, tidal volume depends on lung compliance and airway resistance. However, this relationship provides important information about how changes in flow rate or inspiratory time impact tidal volume. Flow rate plays a crucial role in determining how gas is delivered to the lungs during mechanical ventilation. Ventilators can deliver gas in different flow waveforms which is represented on ventilator as flow time waveform. Different types of flow time waveforms are associated with various modes of ventilation and patient conditions. When the flow is directed into the lungs during inspiration, it is plotted as a positive value on the waveform because the flow is moving in the direction of the ventilator towards the patient. When the patient exhales, the flow reverses direction, moving out of the lungs and away from the ventilator. This reversed flow is plotted as a negative value because it represents movement in the opposite direction. We will concentrate on the inspiratory part here as the expiratory flow is usually passive and same for all the different types of waveform with gradual decline to zero before the next breath. The square flow waveform is characteristic of volume-controlled ventilation, where the ventilator delivers a preset volume of air to the patient at a consistent, unchanging rate throughout the inspiratory phase. This constant flow rate is represented by a flat, horizontal line on the flow time waveform, indicating that air is being delivered steadily into the lungs. At the end of inspiration, when the ventilator stops delivering air, the flow rate suddenly drops to zero, which is shown by a sharp, vertical drop in the waveform. This abrupt change marks the transition from the inspiratory phase to the expiratory phase. This consistent flow ensures the full tidal volume is delivered but can increase peak airway pressures especially in patients with stiff lungs. The descending or decelerating flow waveform seen in pressure-controlled ventilation and some volume modes starts with a high flow rate that gradually decreases during inspiration. This flow pattern improves gas distribution and reduces peak pressures. The accelerating or ascending flow waveform starts with a low flow rate that increases throughout inspiration. It is less common but may be used in specialized situations where an increasing flow rate is beneficial. The sine wave flow waveform gradually increases to a peak and then decreases smoothly closely mimicking natural breathing and making it more comfortable for patients. 
It is used particularly during spontaneous breathing or pressure support ventilation. Finally, the exponential decay flow pattern seen in pressure-controlled ventilation starts with a high flow rate that gradually decreases as the lungs fill. This pattern shown as a downward sloping curve on the waveform helps distribute air more evenly and reduces peak airway pressures making it gentler on the lungs. It's same like descending pattern except that the flow decline is descending ramp is linear at the same rate whereas in exponential decay, the flow decline is gradual giving it a curved appearance. Setting the appropriate flow rate depends on the ventilation mode, patient condition, and clinical goals. First let's look at how we set flow rate on volume control ventilation mode. Flow rate can be set manually in volume-controlled ventilation as a fixed value or it can be adjusted indirectly by setting tidal volume and inspiratory time, which the ventilator uses to calculate the required flow. In both method, understanding the relationship between flow rate, tidal volume and inspiratory time is important. For example, if the tidal volume is 500 milliliters and the inspiratory time is 1 second, the required flow rate would be 30 liters per minute. If the inspiratory time is shortened to 0.8 seconds, the flow rate must be increased to 37.5 liters per minute to maintain the set tidal volume. So, if we set the I time, the ventilator automatically adjusts the flow rate to deliver the set tidal volume within that time. And if we set the flow rate directly, the inspiratory time is determined based on the time required to deliver the tidal volume. Some ventilators also allow the selection of flow patterns, such as square or decelerating flow. Note that the flow rate calculated from this formula is very low, whereas even normal spontaneous breathing typically requires higher flow rates, especially in decelerating flow patterns. A resting patient may need at least 40 to 60 liters per minute of inspiratory flow, which is considerably higher than the value seen in a volume-controlled, square wave pattern. Instead of relying solely on this calculation, ventilator settings should consider inspiratory flow demand, compliance, and resistance. However, the method does provide insight into how tidal volume, inspiratory time, and flow rate are interconnected in mechanical ventilation. In pressure control ventilation, flow is not set directly. Instead inspiratory pressure is used to set inspiratory flow to achieve the desired tidal volume. The relationship between flow rate and tidal volume is explained by this simple equation. Increasing the inspiratory pressure increases the pressure gradient between the ventilator and the lungs, leading to a higher flow. Conversely, lowering inspiratory pressure reduces the pressure gradient, resulting in lower inspiratory flow. The tidal volume also increases too but depends on lung compliance. The flow pattern in pressure-controlled ventilation is decelerating. This is because flow is driven by the pressure gradient between the ventilator and the lungs. At the start of inspiration, when the pressure difference is greatest, flow is at its peak. As the lungs fill and alveolar pressure rises, the pressure gradient decreases, leading to a progressive decline in inspiratory flow. In pressure support ventilation, the patient triggers the breath by generating a small negative pressure. This triggers the ventilator to deliver a preset constant pressure during inspiration. The goal is to support the patient's spontaneous breathing by providing additional pressure. When the patient tries to inhale more deeply or forcefully, their inspiratory demand increases. This causes the ventilator to increase the flow rate to match the patient's increased effort and maintain the set pressure. 
When the patient's inspiratory effort slows, the ventilator will decrease the flow rate to maintain the same pressure. So in pressure support ventilation, the flow rate depends on the set pressure support level and adjusts dynamically in real time based on the patient's inspiratory effort. The flow during pressure support follows a decelerating pattern just like the pressure-controlled ventilation with high pressure at the start of inspiration with gradual decline as the inspiration continues. Now let's look at the effect of setting flow rate too low or too high. A low flow rate can lead to a prolonged inspiratory time, which may reduce expiratory time and increase the risk of breath stacking or auto-peep. It can also cause air hunger and ventilator desynchrony if the patient's inspiratory effort exceeds the delivered flow. As the ventilator fails to meet the patient's demand, they struggle to draw in enough volume, increasing respiratory effort. This mismatch may lead to additional breath attempts leading to desynchrony, increased work of breathing, and discomfort. A high flow rate on the other hand can cause the ventilator to deliver air quickly into the lungs. This rapid flow causes a higher volume of air to be pushed into the lungs in a shorter time, which raises airway pressures. Elevated PIP increases the risk of barotrauma. High flow rates may also shorten the inspiratory time, potentially leading to inadequate alveolar ventilation and compromised gas exchange. 